Hi, I'm here with Ophelia, the always beguiling soprano, Brenda Ray. Hello. Hi, Brenda. Hi. I am astounded by this. Your performance is beyond gripping, and this role is entirely new to you. How is it, how are you finding singing Brett Dean's music? I love singing Brett Dean's music. Um, it's really expressive. He has a wonderful way of setting the text. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't just live up high. You know, of course, we notice all those high notes, but he has a really great way of adding some lyric moments, too. So you really get a fully rounded character. Well, that's incredibly clear. And your Hamlet, uh, Alan Clayton, he created the role. I know his, he's spectacular. Oh, yeah. We'll have an opportunity to speak to him later. But he created his role in the original run in Glyndebourne. Tell us how it feels playing opposite him. Oh, it's, it's, I have to say it's one of the biggest honors of my life. He is not only the most spectacular performer, astonishing in every single way, but he's such a wonderful human. And I came into this piece a little nervous. But because, why? Well, you know, it's kind of difficult. <laughs> But he was so warm and such a great stage partner. I, I, had, I have no fear being on stage with him. We well, can do anything. I have to say, your chemistry is really amazing. And it's, uh, that feels like something that it has to be there. You can't teach that. You can't try to have that. And uh, spoiler alert for those of you who don't know the story, the next time we see Ophelia, it's going to be for her mad scene. How do you prepare to go mad on the stage of the Met? And I do mean in the opera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, every day I'm a little every mad day. on the Met. <laughs> Oh, it's it's kind of like any other character work. Um, but I, I, I think about where I've been in the beginning part of the opera mm -hmm. and where why she's broken now. Right. And really, you just need to live those moments. I feel incredibly vulnerable, but like you just let your imagination run wild. That's the wonderful thing about mad scenes. So if it's a little bit different from one day to the next, that actually just makes it better. I completely agree. And it gives it a vitality and a life that's really exciting for the audience. Mm -hmm. I will say that it's seems like the the gift for you remarkable coloraturas singing the mad scenes it uh, it's something that is always really interesting to me how does this one compare to other more familiar ones and I want to ask also do high notes always come as part of these scenes? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. this one, the high notes are all written in. Yeah. With other mad scenes like Lucia, you get to add high notes. But um, I, I really love kind of modern. I've never done a modern mad scene because you can do different things with your voice. I, I make a lot more kind of guttural noises yeah. that I would not make in Lucia. Like, you still want your voice to be beautiful for those bel canto mad scenes. Mm -hmm. And this one... You just get to be even more of an actress. Well, this is what's really cool about it. You know, we were discussing earlier some of the unusual demands of this score, but I have to say every bit of your voice is used in this, and it adds to the incredible characterization. I thank you so much for speaking with us, Brenda, and I appreciate all of the time that you're taking in your intermission. Toy, toy, toy for what comes next. Toy, toy, toy. Thank you so much. Thank you.